In this video, we're going to take a look at conditional forwarding and stub zones. So if internet name resolution takes us up to the top of the DNS tree, and we need to follow the fully qualified domain name down the DNS tree using delegations, well, there's one more direction we could go, which is sideways. And that's what we would use either conditional forwarding or stub zones to do. Let's take a look at why we would need to do this. Let's suppose we have two companies. Now, corp.company.com and int.partner.com are not resolvable from the internet. But the two companies merge, and now clients in each forest must be able to resolve names in the other forest. Well, since the domains are not resolvable using root hints, the DNS servers in each forest must be configured to directly contact the DNS servers in the other forest. So here, the client in corpcompany.com contacts its DNS server, and that DNS server has to know how to go directly over to talk to the DNS server at partner.com. Another reason might be because we have a very complicated forest structure. So here we're going to suppose that clients in CBA very frequently need to resolve names for resources in EDA. The client will contact their DNS server in CBA and we would need to configure forwarding up to domain A or the top of this DNS tree and it would request how can I get to EDA. Well A is going to have a delegation for DA and it'll send that information back to the DNS server at CBA. So now the DNS server at CBA contacts the DNS server at DA and that's going to have a delegation down to EDA and it sends that information back down to the server at C.B.A. Now the DNS server at CBA can contact DNS server at EDA and find out the information that it needs. It would be a lot faster if when the client contacts its DNS server it could send the request right to the DNS servers in EDA and have the answer come directly back. A stub zone is a copy of the zone that contains only the DNS server records. If all that server has is a stub zone, it would hit the stub zone and shoot sideways to talk to the DNS servers that are authoritative for that domain. Let's look at the pros and cons versus using conditional forwarding or stub zones. With conditional forwarding, one of the pros is that it does not require permission. You need permission to have any copy of the zone, even if it's just a stub zone. So here, since it doesn't require permission, we can use conditional forwarding for a company with whom we don't have a relationship. Another pro in terms of Microsoft tests is that there's no transfer of records, so there's no traffic going back and forth between the two companies. The negative or the con would be that it's static. So if the DNS servers at the other domain change their IP address, you have to manually go into DNS and update that conditional forwarding. Stub zones are exactly the opposite. So a negative or a con is that it does require permission. I need the person at that zone to go in and give me permission to have a copy of the zone even if the only zone I'm going to take a copy of is a stub zone and it's just a very small fraction of the records. Since I have that stub zone with some records, there is some traffic going back and forth between the two companies, so there is some transfer of records. But the pro to this is that it's dynamic. If any of the DNS servers at the other company update their records, my servers will immediately get the change because they have a copy of the zone. Just to recap, conditional forwarding and stub zones are used to resolve domains that are not available by going through the root servers up on the internet, or they could be used to speed up internal name resolution in a complex Active Directory environment. With conditional forwarding, the pluses are that I don't need permission and there's no transfer of records. But the minus here is that it's static. If something changes, I have to update it manually. Whereas with stub zones, I do need permission and there is some transfer of records, but the pro here is that it's dynamic. So if anything changes, I'll get the updates directly.